you much of for this morning. Let me tell you a challenge they have. Priests really need to listen to people no matter how old or young they are. And the one thing I enjoy about Monday night is I know I'm going to hear the truth whether I want to hear it or not. And so I want you to know that according to the four young women who are part of the Baptist Confirmation class, they graded their, their preachers in this church. And I did not get an A. Okay. Which I thought was odd. Okay. I won't tell you what they did grade me. Probably there's money in it. Keeping mouth shut. <laughs> but it gives me, it gives me impetus to, to work harder. When I hear things that maybe I don't want to hear, it gives me impetus to work harder. Remember that. Take that downstairs with you. Okay? If you want to know what today is about, take out your leaflet and look at that opening prayer, what we call the collect. I want you to look at it carefully. I want you to hear the words that are prayed. What did I say? Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation. That's what today is about. It's about what we focus on here in worship. It's going to be about what we focus on down at the annual meeting. It is about why we are Christians and what we're doing here. And it's all about being fishermen. Now let me explain something for all my baggage out there for you to know. I hate fishing. <laughs> I despise it. Okay? And what makes it worse is that my brother and his son are avid, uh, addicted fishermen. They go out of this stupid boat and they go out <coughs> there somewhere and they spend a lot of time doing whatever it is that they do. And that's how they bond together. I was invited to go with them. I did it once. I will never do it again. <laughs> God invented stop and shop so that I could go fishing there. Okay? But to be fair, this is what I learned about fishing. And I learned, I will never admit it to my brother, but I will admit it to you. Fishing is about time. It takes time. You've got an unbelievable amount of time to get ready, to put all this stuff together. It takes time to get where you want to go, where the fish are biting or sleeping or whatever fish do. It takes time to set up your equipment, and it takes patience and time to know when the right time to act is. It takes time to be a good fisher. Our church begins with Jesus calling four young men who happen to be professional. This is what they did for a living. This wasn't a lot of fun to do on a nice summer afternoon. He asked them, look, guys, I want you to come. I want you to follow me now. The time is now. And I'm sure they thought that in their minds that, look, anything has got to be better than what we're doing. Because fishing is dangerous work. I've already mentioned this to you. Uh, I'm into archaeology, especially biblical archaeology. I love it when they find another boat at the bottom of the Sea of Galilee, which gives us a real wonderful clue to what life was like back then. And the reason we find so many boats at the bottom of the Sea of Galilee is because it was so dangerous. Storms came up. The Sea of Galilee isn't like a little lake. It's like the Great Lakes. With, with tides and storms that would come up, it was extremely dangerous. So I thought they must, they must have figured, hey, this is great. We're going to follow this carpenter preacher. What can happen? <laughs> and what happens is they become involved in the fulfillment of sacred prophecy. To use one of those biblical words, this was the fullness of time. This was the time when God says, enough. It's time to begin a ministry and fulfill what the prophet Isaiah had written about so many centuries before. But it's not about deliverance from, or some POWs from a long ago forgotten war. This is about those who are prisoners of their own self-centeredness. It's about a world that turns in on itself, trying to find happiness, looking for it in all the wrong places. And these four young men who are going to be joined by another group so that originally they become 12, they're going to hear some incredible words. They're going to hear how God's message totally changes how we're supposed to look at ourselves and look at our relationship to God. Because Jesus starts preaching this. He starts talking about repentance is not a condition for God's love. It's a response to God's love. Those words have never been heard before. I don't look into my heart and soul and realize where I need to change. 
because I'm going to prove to God that I love God. Or somehow, if I do it right, then God will love me. It's because God has loved me first and reached out to me and called me and sent me out. That's why I repent. That's why I have to. That's what we're called to do. Repentance is accepting into your very soul that salvation truly has been offered by the one we call our Lord and Messiah. And his time is now. So what those 12, well, most of them were fishermen, got involved in, well, that's all of us. Bringing Christ into the world. This is St. John's Parish. This is the day of the annual meeting. As I told you before, probably the dumbest day of the, of the year, except for maybe doing it on Super Bowl Sunday. And that would always be dumb. Okay. I get that. And I'm not a fool. But what we start here today, what we reflect on today, starting with this Eucharist, right, is remember we're here to bring that same message to everyone outside of these four walls. We exist as a parish to bring people to Christ. Decades ago, it's a great one of the great uh, Archbishops of Canterbury, I think it was Michael Ramsey, but I, I'm not swearing it. He kept reminding people over and over again, it was a theme that went through all of his sermons and all of his speeches. The church is the only institution ever been created that exists for people outside of itself. We're not here to reflect upon ourselves and what we do. We're here to bring others to God. And our world definitely needs to hear that. It is a world that is still starved with hunger and ignorance and suffering and sinfulness. And Jesus sends us with love and asks us to commit ourselves to him so we can bring others and have them share what we have. We need to continue the work of those fishermen, not going at it to boats, thank you God, but <laughs> being listeners and disciples <clears throat> and hearers and doers of God's word to announce just how radical Jesus is. I hope you heard Father Michael last week when he talked about the radicalness of the message of Christ. We have heard it so often it's bland and it's vanilla to us. But to the world in which he preached, it was unheard of. And to the world we live in outside this church, it is still unheard of. We believe in our heart and in our gut and in our soul that God is love and that God loved us so much he walked among us and offered himself for us and died for us and rose for us so that we could live forever. And there's not a message that's more important than that. We were created for love, we're destined for love, all we have to do is open our hearts and to show our gratitude for that, to hear the word of Christ. Repent, change your ways, believe, be committed, make it real. It's not a message that's made for politicians, it's not a message intended for a friendly audience, and it's not even a message that's always here for people who understand where they are in their faith journey. But it's a message we need to hear. And let his word get in so that it can get in that we can be the people God calls us to be, and we can be the parish God calls us to be. The message of Jesus Christ is the person of Jesus Christ. The person who commits himself to you so that you can bring others to him. There are still people who walk in darkness. I have been one. And I suspect on occasion so have you. Those who hear, need to hear the word, they're sitting in this church, they're standing in this church. All about us. They're us. So today you're going to hear a lot of words. You're going to spend a lot of time here. You're going to listen to reports and financial situations, and you're going to elect people, and all of that is important. You've got to listen. You've got to hear it, and then do something with it. But over and above that, as Christians, as believers, as someone who takes the call of the master seriously, you've got to go out and fish. If this is important to you, your relationship to Christ, then share it with others. Bring others to the joy that you have. One thing I learned about watching my brother and my nephew fish, I know it's hard work. Maybe there's a part of me that's lazy and doesn't want to be into that. I don't want to think it's just because I don't like Bob going down the water and having a small fish. I think, I hope there's more to be. But the point I am asking, the point I do know is that it is tremendously hard work, but for them who are committed, it's joyful work. 
They really enjoy what they do. Do we enjoy what we do as Christians? It's hard work, yeah. It's hard to commit yourself to someone who keeps saying, I need more from you, I love you, bring others to me, who keeps sending us out and keeps saying, look, you're going to be my follower, then you've got to take up your cross each day and follow me. <clears throat> you've got to love others as I have loved you. You've got to love your enemies. I mean, you keep hearing that type of stuff and you want to go, no, ah, 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 I don't want to hear that. But that's what we're called to be, that's what we're called to do. It doesn't end here in this room, it just starts here in this room. When I say at the end of the service, go in peace to love and serve the Lord, I'm basically saying, okay, you've been fed, get out of here and do the important work. Bringing others to Christ 